The cosmetics industry is not regulated nearly as much as the food industry, which is really scary because this stuff goes on your body. So the question is, what's the best sunscreen? Hi, dermatologist here. Funny thing about this is, you know, he's talking about how cosmetics are regulated versus food. When talking about sunscreen, that's irrelevant because they're regulated as drugs. And you know what? I'm no food expert, but drugs are regulated very heavily. There's a reason why we haven't had a new UV filter approved in the U.S. in the last 25 years. But go off. There's two kinds of sunscreen. There's mineral-based, the good ones, and chemical-based, the bad ones. Minerals are often made of zinc oxide, and that's good because it never penetrates your skin. The chemical-based ones are made with chemicals that penetrate your skin and can be found in your body, in your breast tissue, in baby milk breast milk up to three or four weeks later. There is no such thing as like a good commercially available sunscreen and a bad one from like a safety standpoint if they're following all the regulations, in my opinion. People will go off about, use zinc, use zinc, use zinc. A lot of the mineral sunscreens out there now use these kind of stealth chemical UV filters like butyl octal salicylate. What they fail to realize is that Basically, all the UV filters that we have available in the U.S. here work the same way. This thing about, like, skin penetration, small amounts of topically applied products can be absorbed into the bloodstream. It doesn't make it bad. There are plenty of things that go into our bloodstream in trace amounts from the environment, from the food that we eat, etc. And you don't have people freaking out about that. Can UV filters be found in breast milk? Yes. I'm going to need a citation on the three to four weeks there. Like, I couldn't find it. So why has this not caused concern all over the place? Well, firstly, nobody's observed really any effects from that. Also, it seems to be dose dependent. Let me just tell you, a lot of people are not wearing as much sunscreen as they should or wearing it all the time. However, let's let's do a little thought experiment. There's this one study out of Spain that a lot of people like to point to. The sample size is really small, but it turns out that they found UV filters in like one quarter of the breast milk that they looked at. Concentrations of UV filters that they found were measured in basically like several hundred nanograms per, I believe that's gram of breast milk. I'm gonna do some math, stick with me. Some estimates put the average newborn at drinking about 700 mLs of breast milk per day. We're gonna equate that to 700 grams. Typically an mL of water weighs a gram and breast milk is mostly water. So let's take that highest concentration that they found in that study. We're going buck wild, so we're gonna use that concentration of 780 nanograms per gram of milk. And the reason I say we're going buck wild is if somebody's using sunscreen, they're not using it constantly. So it probably isn't going to show up in the milk constantly. I did some quick math and conversion, and essentially that baby is getting 0. 0.0005 grams of sunscreen filter in their diet per day. And this is if they're getting the highest found concentration 24 hours a day, which is not realistic. Let's look at something else that shows up in breast milk, caffeine. It's generally accepted that having a little bit of caffeine when somebody is breastfeeding is fine. They say to limit it to about 300 milligrams of caffeine per day. It's been estimated by some sources that 1.5% of the caffeine that's drank will show up in the breast milk. Doing some quick math, that's 4.5 milligrams or 0 0.005 grams that that baby will get that day and that's considered safe. So if somebody's drinking caffeine at the appropriate amount, that baby's gonna get more caffeine than they would get if they were the highest user of UV filters in Spain and they were applying sunscreen all day, even at night. What's more is that there are immediate effects that you could see from a baby getting caffeine. They could become restless. They may not sleep correctly, and sleep is really important for an infant. But you know what? There's an acceptable amount. And, you know, if you don't go over that for most people, their babies don't have issues. Why? Because the dose makes the poison. 
you could have a cup of coffee per day and breastfeed and it's not an issue. If you had six or seven cups, it might be an issue for your baby. We really haven't seen any ill effects from sunscreen filters in breast milk. And truth be told, all of the math I just did doesn't freaking matter because again, the dose makes the poison. Now, don't get me wrong. Everybody has to make their own individual decisions about their personal health and their kids' health and should talk to their own doctor about it. Talk to somebody who knows you. I don't blame people if they want to go with a mineral sunscreen because that makes them feel better. That's fine. What I have an issue with is fear-mongering based on nothing. And if you're ever thinking about using any kind of spray, spray bottle like this, avoid it because when it goes into the air, it can be inhaled into your lungs and coat the inside of your body. There are specific safety standards about spray sunscreens. Some of those regulations have to do with actual particle size to prevent inhalation. But interestingly, do you know which UV filter presents most concern when used in a spray? Titanium dioxide, a mineral filter. I call this genre of video like white guy in Target. In this case, I think it's Whole Foods. But like if you see any of videos of these people just standing there fear-mongering at a shelf, just scroll.